Greetings, friends. Welcome back to the broadcast. I'm Sean, your host. Website is www.scriptureandprophecy.com. That's where you go to support this mission of truth, of spreading the word of God, and that's where you go to find the archives and other things of that nature. We are continuing our study uh, for this week, the Feast of Weeks, Shavuot, Pentecost, and we started it on Monday and we talked about, we studied the story out of Exodus, and another tradition uh, that takes place during Shavuot is the reading of the book of Ruth. Uh, the book of Ruth uh, is just a, a lovely story, a great story. Um... It's read during Shavuot because it takes place during that harvest season. And we talked about how Shavuot is a is a harvest festival, a harvest feast. Uh, but it's more than that. It's also a, a foreshadow um, of the Gentile bride of Christ. Um, it's a foreshadow of Messiah uh, redeeming humankind um, so it's it's a picture of all that and of course the Messiah type comes from this relationship uh, that we see between Boaz and Ruth and th that King David uh, would come from uh, their lineage so it's a great story and we'll see all kinds of parallels uh, to Messiah uh, as we go through it uh, we have four chapters to read and so let's, uh, let's dig right in uh, so that we do not run out of time. We're going to read from the King James Bible this morning. So let's begin. Verse 1. Now it came to pass in the days when the judges ruled that there was a famine in the land. A certain, warm, a certain man of Bethlehem, Judah, went to sojourn in the country of Moab, he and his wife and his two sons. And the name of the man was Elimelech, and the name of his wife was Naomi, and the name of his two sons, Malan and Chilion, Ephrates of Bethlehem, Judah. And they came into the country of Moab and continued there. And Elimelech, Naomi's husband, died, and she was left, and her two sons and they took them wives of the woman of Moab. The name of one was Orpah, and the name of the other, Ruth. And they dwelled there about ten years. And Malan and Chilion died also, both of them, and the woman was left of her two sons and her husband. Then she arose with her daughters-in-law, that she might return from the country of Moab, for she had heard in the country of Moab how the Lord had visited his people in giving them bread. Wherefore she went forth out of the place where she was, and her two daughters-in-law with her, and they went on the way to return to the land of Judah. And Naomi said unto her two daughters-in-law, Go, return each to her mother's house. The Lord deal kindly with you, as ye have dealt with the dead and with me. The Lord grant you that you find rest, each of you, in the house of her husband. Then she kissed him, and they lifted up their voice and wept. And they said unto her, Surely we will return with thee unto thy people. And Naomi said, Turn again, my daughters. Why will you go with me? Are there yet any more sons in my womb, that they may be your husbands? Turn again, my daughters, go your way, for I am too old to have a husband. If I should say I have hope, if I have a husband, and also tonight, and should also bear sons, would you tarry for them till they were grown? Would you stay for them from having husbands? Nay, my daughters, for it grieveth me much for your sakes that the hand of the Lord is gone out against me. And they lifted up their voices and wept again. And Orpah kissed her mother-in-law, but Ruth clave unto her. And she said, Behold, thy sister-in-law is gone back unto her people and unto her gods. Return thou after thy sister-in-law. And Ruth said, Entreat me not to leave thee, 
or to return from following after thee. For whither thou goest, I will go, and whither thou lodgest, I will lodge. Thy people shall be my people, and thy God my God. And so here we have the two daughters. So let me just recap real quick here. The first 16 verses we have, you know, Elimelech moves to Moab with his wife Naomi. He's got his two sons. They take wives from those people, uh, Ruth being one of them. Uh, but Elimelech and both of his sons die, leaving Naomi a widow and sonless, which basically at that time and that culture would mean she was had no hope. You know, there was nobody to take care of her at this point. She hears that there's no longer a famine, and so now she's going to return to Judah. And she's telling her daughter-in-laws, who are not Jewish, go back to your people, go back to your gods, find new husbands. Orpah, reluctantly so, but still ends up doing so. But Ruth cleaves to Naomi. And here we have that picture of that uh, Gentile convert, that Gentile believer or bride of Messiah type foreshadow here. And she says, no, your people are going to be my people. Your God will be my God. And so she refuses to leave, um, but has a righteous spirit to stay with her, with her mother-in-law. Okay, let's continue, starting with verse 17. Where thou diest will I die, and there will I be buried. The Lord do so to me, and more also if aught, but death part thee and me. And she saw that she was steadfastly minded to go with her. Then she left speaking unto her. So they too went until they came to Bethlehem. And it came to pass when they were to come to, the, to Bethlehem, that all the city was moved about them. And they said, Is this Naomi? And she said unto them, Call me not Naomi. Call me Mara. For the Almighty hath dealt very bitterly with me. Okay, that verse in the King James and other English translations is lost. Uh, you have to know a little bit of Hebrew not to understand what's going on here. Uh, she's, there's, they return to the land, and the people are like, Is this Naomi? And she says unto them, Do not call me Naomi. Call me Mara. Mara for the Almighty had dealt with very bitterly with me. We have to remember that the names in Hebrew mean something. Each name has a meaning. It's, it's more than just a name. And so what she's actually saying here, and uh, she's saying... They say, could this be Naomi? And she says to them, do not call me Naomi, which means pleasant one. So Naomi means pleasant one. She says, do not call me Naomi anymore, which means pleasant one. Call me Mara, which means embittered one. So she's saying, nope, don't call me pleasant one anymore. Call me embittered one because the Lord has dealt with, uh, bitterly with me, right? Uh, well, she, she says, The Almighty hath dealt very bitterly with me, so call me embittered one. Verse 22. I went out full, and the Lord hath brought me home again empty. Why then ye call me Naomi, seeing the Lord hath testified against me, and the Almighty hath afflicted me? Say, so Naomi returned, and Ruth the Moabite, with her daughter-in-law, with her, which returned out of the country of Moab, and they came to Bethlehem, in the beginning of the barley harvest. Chapter 2 And Naomi had a kinsman of her husband, a mighty man of wealth, of the family of Elimelech, and his name was Boaz. So basically, if you have land, and you, in your, I'm going to give you this short version here, you, your family has land, your husband dies, uh, if you have a kinsman, the nearest relative, kinsman, can redeem the land. In other words, buy it. But when he buys it, he takes on the responsibility of the land and, you know, the woman and all that stuff. Um, so it's pointing out, it's reminding us, hey, there is a kinsman redeemer 
available here. And of course, Messiah, Yeshua, Jesus Christ is our kinsman redeemer. And so it's a foreshadow of that also. Verse 2. And Ruth the Moabitess said unto Naomi, Let me now go to the field and glean ears of corn after him, in whose sight I shall find grace. And she said unto her, Go, my daughter. Now, I'm sorry I have to keep interrupting. I have to point out and remind us that according to the law, it was okay for uh, you, were to, you were to let the poor glean. In other words, as they're harvesting the stuff that falls on the ground, the poor are allowed to pick up. So the poor would be behind the harvesters picking up grain as it falls to the ground. And so that's what, she's, that's what Naomi's getting ready to do. She's like, I'm going to go to the field and I'm going to glean. And Ruth the Moabitess said unto Naomi, Let me go to the field and glean ears of corn after him, in whose sight I shall find grace. And she said unto her, Go, my daughter. And she went and came and gleaned in the field after the reapers. And her hap was to light on a part of the field belonging to Boaz, who was of the kindred of Elimelech. And behold, Boaz came from Bethlehem and said to the reapers, The Lord be with you. And they answered him, The Lord bless thee. Then said Boaz unto his servants that was set over the reapers, Whose damsel is this? And the servant that was set over the reapers answered and said, It is the Moabitish damsel that came back with Naomi out of the country of Moab. And she said, I pray you, let me glean and gather after the reapers among the sheaves. So she came and, and hath continued even from the morning until now, that she tarried a little in the house. Then Boaz said unto Ruth, Hearest thou not, my daughter? Go not to glean in another field, neither go from hence, but abide here fast by my maidens. Let thine eyes be on the field that they do reap, and go after them. Have I not charged the young men that they shall not touch thee? And when thou art athirst, athirst go into the vessels and drink of that which the young men have drawn. Then she fell on her face, and she bowed herself to the ground, and said unto him, Why have I found grace in thy eyes, that thou shouldest take knowledge of me, seeing I am a stranger? And Boaz answered and said unto her, It hath fully been shown me all that thou hast done unto thy mother-in-law, since the death of thy husband, and how thou hast left thy father and thy mother in the land of thy nativity, and art come unto a people which thou knewest not here to four. All right, couple of things I got to point out. Uh, again, we're seeing that Messiah type, and what's Boaz telling her? Boaz is telling Naomi, "Hey, don't go into any other fields. Stay in this one. Glean all you want. Drink all the fresh water that you want. I've charged the men, young men, that they are not allowed to touch you." And so when I read that, it's like to me, it's like a picture of uh, us not going out into the world, staying, you know, within our boundaries, within the boundaries of our heavenly Father that He has set for us. Um, also, there is a phrase here. Again, you would know, you would see it in Hebrew, but you, but uh, we can we can kind of catch it in English too. That reminds us. Uh, Ruth kind of reminds us of Abraham, um, in a sense here, because we have the exact same language used, and she's being, because remember, uh, Abraham, who was not a Jew, he was the father of all the Hebrews that would come from him, remember, Jacob is is a descendant of Abraham. Abraham was his grandfather, and then the twelve tribes of Israel, one of them being Judah, came from Jacob. So here we had, you know, we had Abraham. And what did God tell him? He said, leave, you know, the land where you've grown up that you know and go to a land that you know not. And uh, we have the same thing with her and with Ruth. And as a matter of fact, Boaz is saying, this is why you found favor with me because you left your own fa father and mother uh, and went to a land that you know not uh, for the sake of your mother-in-law. Uh, let me read verse 11 again, and we'll continue on. And Boaz answered and said unto her, It hath fully been showed me all that thou hast done unto, my, unto thy mother-in-law since the death of thy husband, and how thou hast left thy father and thy mother in the land of thy nativity, and art come unto a people which thou knowest 
not heretofore. The Lord recompense thy work, and a full reward be given thee of the Lord God of Israel under those under whose wings thou art come to trust. Then she said, Let me find favor in thy sight, my Lord, for thou hast comforted me, and for thou thou hast spoken friendly unto thy handmaid, though I be not like unto one of thy handmaids, maidens. And Boaz said unto her at mealtime, Come thou hither, and eat at the bread, and dip thy morsel in the vinegar. And she sat beside the reapers, and he reached her parched corn, and she did eat, and was sufficed, and left. And when she was risen up to glean, Boaz commanded his young men, saying, Let her glean even among the sheaves, and reproach her not. And let fall some also of the handfuls of purpose for her, and lead them that she may glean them, and rebuke her not. So she gleaned into the field even, and beat out that she could be had gleaned, and it was about a ha, about an ephah of barley. And she took it up, and she went to the city. And her mother-in-law saw what she had gleaned, and she brought forth, and she gave to her that she had reserved after she was sufficed. And her mother-in-law said unto her, Where hast thou gleaned today? And where wroughtest thou? Blessed be he that did take knowledge of thee. And she showed her mother-in-law with whom she had wrought, and said, The man's name with whom I wrought today is Boaz. And Naomi said unto her daughter-in-law, Blessed be of the Lord, who hath not left off his kindness to the living and to the dead. And Naomi said unto her, The man is near akin unto us, one of our next kinsmen. And Ruth the Moabitess said, He said unto me also, Thou shalt keep fast by my young men until they have ended all my harvest. And Naomi said unto Ruth, her daughter-in-law, It is good, my daughter, that thou go out with his maidens, that they meet thee not in any other field. So she kept fast by the maidens of Boaz to glean unto the end of barley harvest and of the wheat harvest, and dwelt with her mother-in-law. Chapter 3 Then Naomi, her mother-in-law, said unto her, My daughter, shall I not seek rest for thee, that it may be well with thee? And now is not Boaz of our kindred, with whose maidens thou wast? Behold, he winnoweth barley tonight in the threshing floor. Wash thyself therefore, and anoint thee, and put thy raiment upon thee, and get thee down to the floor, but make not thyself known unto the man, until, sh until he shall have gone, until he shall have done eating and drinking. And it shall be when he lieth down, Thou shalt mark the place where he shall lie, and thou shalt go in and uncover his feet, and lay thee down, and he will tell thee what thou shalt do. And she said unto her, All that thou sayest unto me I will do. Uh, notice that phrase, uncover his feet. That's just like an idiom, a uh, Hebrew phrase for take a nap. Uh, you see it uh, also... Uh, in the in the story where Saul, King Saul, goes into a cave to uncover his feet, uh, and then David sneaks in and cuts off a portion of his uh, robe. Right? Of course, the NIV says that he's relieving himself, uh, but that's because the translators of the NIV don't know what they're talking about <laughs> when it comes to that. Uh, but that's that's a phrase uh, that you see more than once in the Bible, and it's very clear in this story what it means. Uh, moving forward, verse 6, And she went down into the floor, and did according to all that her mother-in-law bade her. And when Boaz had eaten and drunk, and his heart was merry, he went to lie down at the end of the heap of corn. And she came softly and uncovered his feet, and laid her down. And it came to pass at midnight, that the man was afraid, and he turned himself, and behold, a woman lay at his feet. And he said, Who art thou? And she answered, I am Ruth thy handmaid. Spread therefore thy skirt over thy handmaid, for thou art a near kinsman. And he said, Blessed be thou of the Lord, my daughter, for thou hast showed more kindness in the latter end than in the beginning, inasmuch as thou followedest not young men, whether poor or rich. And now, my daughter, fear not, I will do to thee all that thou requirest. For all the city of my people doth know that thou art a virtuous woman. 
and now it is true that I am thy near kinsman. Howbeit there is a kinsman nearer than I. Tarry this night, and it shall be in the morning, that if he will perform unto thee the part of a kinsman, well, let him do the kinsman's part. But if he will not do the part of a kinsman to thee, then will I do the part of a kinsman to thee, as the Lord liveth. Lie down until the morning. All right, so uh, Ruth kind of does this. It, it it's almost like it's almost like uh, in modern times, and uh, today's time, it'd almost be like the woman proposing to the man. Uh, in in a way, you know, that's what she's doing. She's uh, she's she's laying on his feet. He wakes up and he's like, "What?" and she base she asked him to redeem her, which he clearly, um, you know, uh, has a heart for her. Uh, and he says, "I absolutely will do that, but there's one problem. There's a kinsman nearer than me, and so the the kinsman that is nearest in relation is the one who gets first dibs on redeeming the land. Uh, so he says, if he will not redeem." then I will redeem. Okay. Uh, verse 14. And she lay at his feet until the morning, and she rose up before one could know another. And he said, Let it not be known that a woman came into the floor. Also he said, Bring the veil that thou hast upon thee and hold it. And when she held it, he measured six measures of barley and laid it on her, and she went into the city. And when she came to her mother-in-law, she said, Who art thou, my daughter? And she told her all that the man had done to her. And she said, These six measures of barley gave he me. For he said to me, Go not empty unto thy mother-in-law. Then said she, Sit still, my daughter, until thou knowest how the matter will fall. For the man will not be in rest until he have finished this thing this day. And if, so Naomi saying, Don't worry. He's going he's gonna to deal with this issue today. You're not going to be waiting very long. And any man who's ever been head over heels in love with a woman knows that there is no way that Boaz is going to wait a week to deal with this issue. He's dealing with this issue right now, which we will see. Uh, so let's read chapter 4, and then we'll be finishing up here just a few more verses to see how this story plays out. Verse 1. Then went Boaz up to the gate and sat down there, and behold, the kinsman of whom Boaz spake came by, unto whom he said, O oh, such a one, turn aside, sit down here. And he turned aside, and he sat down. And he took ten men of the elders of the city and said, Sit ye down here. And they sat down. And he said unto the kinsman, Naomi, that is come again out of the country of Moab, Selleth a partial of land, which was our brother Elimelech's. And I thought to advertise thee, saying, Buy it before the inhabitants and before the elders of my people. If thou wilt redeem it, redeem it. But if thou wilt not redeem it, then tell me that I may know. For there is none to redeem it besides thee, and I am after thee. And he said, I will redeem it. Then, Boaz, then said Boaz, what day thou buyest the field of the, land, of the hand of Naomi, thou must buy it also of Ruth the Moabitess, the wife of the dead, to raise up the name of the dead upon his inheritance. And the kinsman said, I cannot redeem it for myself, lest I mar my own inheritance. Redeem thou my right to thyself, for I cannot redeem it. All right, so Boaz tells this guy, hey, Here's the situation. You're the closest kinsman. If you're going to redeem it, redeem it. If you won't redeem it, then I'll redeem it. And the guy says, all right, yeah, sure, I'll redeem it. And he says, uh, also, when what comes with this is a package deal, you'll also be redeeming Ruth, uh, the Moabitess, the wife of the dad, and you, to raise up the name upon his inheritance. Um, and this guy's like, whoa, I can't, never mind, I can't redeem it because this is, this is adding too much risk and then I'm risking my own business by redeeming this. This is a picture of what's taking place. So he decides not to redeem it. Verse 7. Now this was the manner in former time in Israel concerning redeeming and concerning changing. For to confirm all things, a man plucked off his shoe and he gave it to his neighbor. And this was a testimony in Israel. 
Therefore the kinsman said unto Boaz, Buy it for thee. So he drew off his shoes, drew off his shoe. And Boaz said unto the elders and to all the people, Ye are witnesses this day that I have bought all that was Elimelech's and all that was Chilion's and Malan's of the hand of Naomi. Moreover, Ruth the Moabitess, the wife of Malan, have I purchased to be my wife to raise up the name of the dead upon his inheritance, that the name of the dead may not be cut off from among his brethren. And from the gate of his place ye are witnesses this day. And all the people that were in the gate and the elders said, We are witnesses. The Lord make the woman that is come into thine house like Rachel and like Leah, which too did build the house of Israel, and to do thou worthily in Avraphath, and to be famous in Bethlehem. And let thy house be like the house of Pharez, whom Tamar bear unto Judah, of the seed which the Lord shall give thee of this young woman. So Boaz took Ruth, and she was his wife. And when he went in unto her, the Lord gave her conception, and she bare a son. The woman said unto Naomi, Blessed be the Lord which hath not left thee this day without a kinsman, that his name may be famous in Israel. And he shall be unto thee a restorer of thy life, and a nourisher of thine old age. For thy daughter-in-law which loveth thee, which is better to thee than seven sons, hath borne him. And Naomi took the child and laid it in her bosom, and became a nurse unto it. And the woman, her neighbors, gave it a name, saying, There is a son born to Naomi. And they called his name Obed. He is the father of Jesse, the father of David. Now these are the generations of Pharaoh, as far as begot Hezron, and Hezron begot Ram, and Ram begot Aminadab, and Aminadab begot Nashon, and Nashon begot Salmon, and Salmon begot Boaz, and Boaz begot Obed, and Obed begot Jesse, and Jesse begot David. And that, my friends, is the book of Ruth. And so we have a, bit, a beautiful picture of so many things. And uh, this uh, this union between Boaz and Ruth would bring forth King David, which would also bring forth uh, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the Messiah. Um, that's why this story is so important. But it also, again, it's showing us this picture of Messiah and redemption and grace and even the Gentile bride, and just there's so much here. Uh, but it is tradition to read it during Shavuot because along with this story is the picture of the harvest. And uh, so there you have it. I pray in the powerful name of Jesus that it blessed you this morning, that it touched your heart, um, and, and causes you to draw more near to your Heavenly Father. Peace and grace be with all of you. And until next time, God bless.